God bless you, people of God. Welcome to church. Hallelujah. Welcome to church. It's time to have our fellowship. It's time to, to fellowship together as a people. Glory, glory, glory. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Who's joining me today? So bless the Lord. Who's joining me today to fellowship together? This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and we will be glad in it. Let us hear what the Father has for us today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. As you are coming in, please help me to share this broadcast. Invite your friends to join us. Invite your friends to join us. Hallelujah. And let us worship together. Amen. Yes, O oh Lord, you are the Lord most high. 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 You are the Lord most high, higher than the highest. We give you praise today. We give you praise. We give you glory. We worship you, Daddy. We exalt you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Blessings, blessings, blessings. Come on in. Let us have a fellowship. Let us have, let us have a koinonia. Let us have a koinonia. Let us have a fellowship together. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Awesome God. Awesome God, you are great. Awesome God, you are great. You are mighty. You are glorious in all your ways. Thank you, Lord. As I want you to come into the presence of God with a heart of thanksgiving, with an attitude of worship, with, a, with an attitude of reverence as we come before our God, that we don't just come casually, that we enter in, hallelujah, with reverence, we enter in with honor. We enter in through the blood of Jesus, but we enter in with reverence, with honor, appreciating that he is God and we must worship him and we must honor him, appreciating that he is God, he is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Oh, Father, we praise you today. We praise you today. We exalt you today. We magnify you today. There is no one like you, oh God. We appreciate you. We appreciate you. We appreciate your power. We appreciate your presence. We appreciate you among us. Father, we thank you as we as we ask, oh God, that you will preside over this service today. We ask, oh God, that you will sit enthroned over our gathering today because our gathering is unto you. We have gathered together unto you, oh God. We have come in the name of Jesus. We have come through the blood of Jesus Christ. Father God, to worship you, to praise you, to offer our thanksgiving unto you. And Lord, to hear what you have to say to us, oh God. Lord, to worship you, to, to commune with you. Father God, to spend time with you in your presence, in your holy presence. So we lift you high today. So we exalt you. We magnify you today. So Father, we ask that you be glorified today in the name of Jesus Christ. We ask that you be glorified today. We thank you, Father God. We give you worship. We adore you. We are your people, oh God. We are your people called by your name. We are your people bought by the blood of the Lamb. We are your people bought by the blood of your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. Oh Lord, we are grateful to you. We are grateful for the privilege of being your people and for the privilege of you being our God, being your people. We thank you, oh Lord. We thank you. We thank you, Father God, for your thoughts towards us, that they are always of good, never of evil. You are constantly thinking about us. We are grateful to you, oh God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for your mercy. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your faithfulness. The things that we understand and the things that we do not understand. We thank you because all things are in your hands, oh Lord, and all things are by your power. We thank you because all things 
things are under your control. Nothing, nothing is outside of your control. Nothing is beyond your reach. We thank you, oh God. You are the one who sees what we cannot see. You are the one who knows what we do not know. You are the one who helps us in our time of weaknesses. You are the one who lifts us up when we are down. Oh, Father, we appreciate you today. We exalt you today. We come, Father God, with a heart of gratitude, just to express our gratitude unto you, to express our gratitude unto you, to say, Father, we are grateful. We are grateful for your goodness towards us. You have been so, so, so good. You have been so good. Even when we were not good to ourselves, you remained constant. You remained good to us. Hallelujah. You remained good to us. You remained merciful. You remained gracious. You remained compassionate. Lord, we thank you that you look beyond our faults and you see our needs. You see our needs for help. You see our need for redemption. We thank you, our Redeemer. We thank you. We worship you today. We exalt you. People of God, I want you to just begin to thank God. Thank him. I want you to think about his goodness in your life. I want you to think about how good God has been to you, how merciful and gracious he has been to you. I want you to think about the fact that if it had not been for his grace upon your life, you would not be where you are today. Lord, we appreciate your grace, oh God. You are gracious unto us. Thank you. Your grace, oh God, that we cannot even earn. Your grace that we do not even deserve. Lord, you just pour your grace upon us. You pour, you pour your affection upon us. And Father, we are grateful for this. We thank you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Father God. So many things have happened in this, in this past few weeks. But Lord, you have kept us. You have preserved us. You have not allowed us to fall. You have not allowed us to falter. You have not allowed us to be, to be victims. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you because you are the one who daily lead us in triumph. Hallelujah. You daily lead us victoriously, triumphantly. Thank you, Father God. Hallelujah. You are the one who goes ahead of us and make every crooked path straight. We are grateful. We know that we are safe in your arms, oh God. We know that we are safe in your arms. We are safe in your arms because in your presence there is safety. In your presence there is security. You are our shield and our buckler. You are our fortress, our hiding place place, our place of refuge. We thank you. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We appreciate you as we proceed, oh God, this, this day. Lord, even to, to share your word, Father God, to share the things that you have you have prepared me for. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that you will open the hearts and the minds of your people. That, Lord, your word, oh Lord, will, will, bear, will bear fruit in their lives, will go down deep in their souls, in the recesses of their hearts, oh Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. And Father, that your word will be relative to everyone that will hear it, that you will speak to every Everybody, oh God, individually, oh God, that you will cause this word, Father God, to minister to each and every one of us in the name of Jesus Christ, that your word will bring healing, your word, your word will bring restoration in Jesus' mighty name. Yes, oh God, your word will bring deliverance today in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Thank you for clarity of thought. Just as a result of your words today, thank you, we'll give you praise. We exalt you. Hallelujah. Lord, I thank you. I thank you for articulating today. I thank you for the anointing for this specific assignment today, oh God, that you will come upon me in power. Holy Spirit, that you will, you will fall afresh upon me and you will animate me, enable me to deliver that which you have prepared me for today. I give you praise, Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. I trust that you are well. I trust that you are well. I trust that you have had a great week. And you are looking forward to this glorious week as well. That this week is going to be glorious in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So last week, we talked about the fact that we have been given everything that we need to live a godly life. A lifestyle that has been chosen for us by God that is expected of us as children of God. The fact that we have been given everything that we need for this lifestyle. We talked about what is godliness, this God, godly life that is expected of us and, and, and the fruits that we are supposed to be bearing. Well, today 
it's just a continuation of that. And today I want to talk about, I want to bring a balance, okay? I want to bring a balance into, into um, this, this idea of living a godly lifestyle. This idea of, of upholding the standard of Jesus Christ. I want, because sometimes it is easier said than done. So I want to bring that balance to it today. Okay, and so I want to speak to you today from the subject of the cost of the path of life. The cost of the path of life. What walking in the path of life will cost you, because it will cost you. And as I, as I'm sure you are, you know, as I'm sure most of us have experienced, or have had different experiences, choosing this path of life is costly. Has a cost to it. And if you have your Bible, I want you to open to the book of Mark chapter 8, and I'm going to read from verse 34 to verse 37. Mark chapter 8, verse 34 to 37. I'm going to do something very quickly, just in one second. If you give me one second, amen, if you give me one second, I want to put the fan on because I am hot. Just give me one second. Hallelujah. This is the beauty of live, you know, live, live, live broadcast. This is just like we are in church in person. You know, when we are in church in person, we can move about and do the things that we need to do. So I need to put the fan on right now. I want to give me one second. Hallelujah. Glory to God. <laughs> So, Mark chapter 8, verse 34. Are you there? Are you there? Amen. Let us read together. Then he called the crowd to him along with his disciples. Him being Jesus. He, he being Jesus. Jesus called the crowd to him along with his disciples and said, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny himself, must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. You can see that this is very clear, very clean cut. It doesn't need any further explanation. Jesus has laid down the standard, the expectation. He says, whosoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whosoever loses his life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. What good is it for someone to gain the world and yet forfeit, forfeit their soul? What good is it that somebody would gain the whole world and yet forfeit their soul. So Jesus is saying that if you want to be my disciple, if you want to call yourself a follower of Jesus Christ, because a disciple means a follower, okay? It means somebody who is being disciplined, who is being discipled, who is being taught, who is being mentored by somebody else. So Jesus is saying that if you want to be that person, if you, if you want to be the person that is a follower of Jesus Christ, the this is the criteria, okay? This is the criteria. It says that you Pick up your cross and you, you follow me. You deny yourself, you take up your cross and you follow me. So the path of life, the path of life, it, it, it is a path that we have been called into, as, as I said last week. It is a path that we are expected to walk in, okay? As Christians, that is the pathway that leads to eternal life with Jesus Christ at the end of our days. It is the pathway that leads to eternal life, okay, at the end of our days. But not just, it is not just about, about the end of our days. It is also about now, specifically about now. It is about now that we need to pay attention to the, how we are walking this walk. If at all we want to, uh, uh, want to have that eternal life with Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So it is not just about, about 
waiting to have to go and have eternal life at the end of our days it is also about experiencing that life while we are here on earth experiencing that life while we are here on earth this is the expectation of god for us this is the expectation of jesus for us this is the expectation of jesus for you okay so we are called to walk the path of life, but there is a cost to it. And Jesus is making it clear. You see, in many, in many places, some people have been, have been told, they have been misinformed, that just give your life to Jesus and everything will be okay. You will have no problems. Everything will be fine. That's a lie. That is a lie. Wherever you have been told that, you need to know that that is a lie. That is not the gospel. Jesus did not say that. Jesus said that you must take up your cross. A cross is not a pleasant thing. A cross is a, is a, is 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 it signifies death actually. A cross is something of pain. Okay, a, a cross is something of self denial, and that is why Jesus is saying you deny yourself. You deny yourself and then follow me. You can't follow me with your full self. And what self is Jesus talking about here? What self is he talking about? We're going to be seeing, you know, all this is going to be clear in a minute. But he is saying that we deny ourselves. We did, we choose him. We prioritize him. Like he told us in, in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, that says that we should seek the kingdom first and his righteousness and every other thing will follow. So it's about prioritizing him. It's about prioritizing his agenda. It's about pri prioritizing the agenda of heaven in every situation. This is not, this is not just theory okay this is not just words this is a lifestyle like i said last week this is a choice a daily choice that you are making a moment by moment decision that you are making whenever you are faced with a particular decision you have to look at that decision you have to look at that circumstance and decide what you're going to do if it's going to please god if it's going to please yourself that is what it means to, for, to take up your cross, to deny yourself and take up your cross and follow him, okay? So, so, so what does it mean to walk the path of life? Clearly, this Jesus is telling us here about the personal choices we make on a daily basis as Christians. The personal choices we make on a daily basis as Christians. The, the decision to do this or not to do this. The decision to go there or not to go there. Whatever it is that you need to make. And you, do you know the thing about this is that most, sometimes, even, even though most of the times, this is not an issue about um, heaven or hell. It's not a heaven or hell situation, okay? It's about it's about living a life that pleases God, that prioritizes God, amen, that prioritizes Jesus, okay? In a particular situation, what are you going to do? It's about, uh, it, it is telling us about the things we choose to do and the things we choose not to do. The things that you choose to say and the things that you choose not to say. It is telling us about the people that we choose to associate ourselves with and, and, and the companies that we choose to keep. Some of us, we associate ourselves with, with some people that, that are not in alignment with the, with, with the will and the purposes of God for our, for our life or the agenda of the kingdom of God. Some of us, we keep companies that uh, with people that don't subscribe to the agenda of the kingdom of heaven. And it is, it is inevitable that people like that, a company like that will corrupt you, will corrupt, will, 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 will um, what do you call it? Influence you. Yes, that's the word. They will influence your decisions. Okay? Because... If, if this, the kind of people that you're associating yourself with, they're the kind of people that don't submit themselves to the word of God, to the standards of God, to the rule of God. They have their own rules, they have their own agenda, and they have their own opinion that don't align with the, with the will and the, with the laws and the command, commandments of God. It is only as a, a, a matter of time before their, their lifestyles, before their life choices, begin to influence yours because the bible says that you should not we should not be deceived because bad companies corrupt good habits bad companies corrupt good habits so you need to consider the company that you keep it doesn't mean that you shouldn't be friends with unbelievers or whatever you can be friendly with them you can be friendly with them but the people you gather with the people you associate yourselves with the people that that you call your friends 
okay? You, will, you Inevitably, you will have different sets of morals, different sets of values. Because if your values and your morals are being informed by the laws of God, what, what are they being informed by? What are they being, being influenced by? Okay, and it's only a matter of time it, when, when you are, especially when you are faced with a, a, a decision that you have to make and you are taking counsels from them or you are talking about it and they are, they are advising you on, on, on how, what, what they think that you should do or you should not do. Only a matter of time before their morals, before their values begin to influence yours. Because the Bible says that do not be deceived. Don't be deceived. Don't be deceived. Bad companies will corrupt good habits. Amen. So this is what this is telling us. And walking the path of life as stipulated by Jesus Christ is making choices that please God in spite of the earlier of the temptation of the alternatives. It is <coughs> making a decision that will please God in spite of the alliance of the alternatives. <coughs> you know, sometimes the alternative decisions will look good, will look attractive, may even make logical sense to you, may appear practical in the situation. It may appear practical as if this is the right thing to do. It makes sense to do this thing. <clears throat> in this moment. As I said, it may not be a heaven or hell situation. It just may be a, 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 a situation where the wisdom of God needs to be applied. For example, the, the Lord may tell you to wait. To wait because there is something bigger ahead of you or to, to let go of something because he has a better plan for you. But it could be, for example, let's say a job. You, you, you know, you got a job offer. But because God knows the future, he knows the future, right? He knows what is going to happen down the road on that job that will not be favorable to you. So the Lord may be saying, no, not now. Don't take that job. I have something better for you. But everything about you may be thinking, but this is, it makes sense for me. You know the location is very good it's not far from my house so i can i won't be i won't be driving home late after work you know the hours are very flexible the pay is good you you begin to put logic on it you see what i'm trying to say this is just an example and you can put this example on any other scenario but basically what i'm trying to say is that the the our choices may not be what god wants to choose for us in that moment in that situation, okay? So walking the path of life is denying yourself as painful, <clears throat> as painful as it may be for you to deny yourself in that, in that instance, you have to do it and choose the, the will of God over that decision, over your decision, okay? No matter how attractive that decision is, no matter how tempting the alternative is. Okay? So choosing Jesus and his ways is not always going to be it's not always going to be easy. It's not always going to be pleasant. It is not always going to be popular. Okay? It's not always going to be easy. It's not always going to be pleasant and it is not always going to be popular. Okay? You 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 Going back to, to, to um, the example of, of getting a job, a big job that I've just given, you know, it could, it, people may be looking at you and thinking, what are you doing? What are you doing? You have become, uh, 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 are, you, are you the only Christian? You know, there are other Christians as well. It doesn't matter. You, it does not making sense what you are doing, declining this big offer. How do you know whether you are going to get a bigger offer, or a better offer, or even anything as good as that? You know, it will not be a popular opinion. Even your family members may not even understand why you are declining it. Okay, you find that you are just you find that you, you are you feel like you are on your own on this thing. 
and yet you still have to please God. Yet you still have to do what the Lord says to do. Okay, it, 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 it's not going to be popular, or, or sometimes you find that, um, in, in other instances, you may find that the choices you make, the decisions you are making, may, may portray you to the people around you as if you are weak or as if you are, you are. You are uh, you are a pushover, a walkover, or you are incapable of defending yourself, or or maybe you are not as smart as them. The things that they can outsmart you. This is in cases, for example, where you just overlook something that you could have taken action. Maybe somebody did something against you, and you could have taken an action that that will that will clearly state that don't do that again. But you choose to just overlook it. You choose to just look uh, look um turn 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 the other cheek and, and you keep it moving. And then people will be thinking, well, hang on, how could you allow that to happen to you? How could you allow that person to do this or do that? How could you allow that to go on? It is because you are choosing to please God. It is because you are choosing a lifestyle that pleases God. Hallelujah. A, life, a lifestyle that pleases God. Because it is not everything that we will understand in the moment. You, it's we, Not everything is made clear to us in the moment. Amen. He, God doesn't, he, he reserves the, the uh, right to not give you the full picture because you may not even understand the full picture in the moment. He just wants us to trust him. He just wants us to obey him because he is the Lord. When you say that somebody is Lord, it means that they have authority over you. Okay, they have authority over you. They can tell you what to do and what not to do. And then we call Jesus our Lord, which means that he has authority over us. He has authority over our decisions. He has authority over our choices. Okay, so 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 when people think that you are a pushover, or you are, you are not smart, you are too weak, all this, all these Christians, all these Christians, you, have, you know, that this, that, 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 the other, of course, that you know that's not true. None of this is true. And that is why Jesus tells us, Jesus tells us in, in Matthew chapter 7, verses 13 and 14, he says to, to, he tells us to enter through the narrow gates. He's saying, enter this path of life that we are trying to walk, that we are trying to enter. It, you, it, it takes a narrow gate. You have to come in through the narrow gate. Jesus said that we should come through the narrow gate because the gate that leads to destruction is broad and many people are flocking to it. The gate that leads to destruction is broad and many people are flocking to it. But the gate that leads to life is narrow and not everyone is finding it. Because making the choices that are pleasing to God are not always easy. Okay, when you say something is broad, it means that it's wide, it has room, it's roomy. Okay, there is room for everything, anything can go. There is room for all kinds of compromises. There is room for there is room for all kinds of attitude. You know, there is room for all kinds of flexibility that doesn't please God. Okay, it's just broad. It's just fit for all. There is room for um, if it's good, if it, if it seems good to it, if it, if it seems good to you, then you do it. Okay. In in, in a place where 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 the gate the gate the gate gate means entry point. Okay, it's the entry point, and we have seen in our world today consequences of going through the 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 broad gate, the wide gate. You know where where everybody thinks that they can do whatever they like. Everything is acceptable. There is there is no absolute. There is no truth. Somebody will tell you, oh, I, I'm, 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 I'm telling my truth. What do you mean you are telling your truth? It's either you tell the truth or, or, or you don't tell the truth. There is no your truth, my truth, their truth. Everybody, everybody has their own truth. No, it, it is a broad gate allows that. Okay, there, are, there is plenty of room for alternative opinions. In, through the broad gate, plenty of room for alternative opinions. And that is why you see many people interpreting the scriptures to suit their own purposes and circumstances. They will interpret the scriptures to suit their own purposes and their own circumstances because, you know, there is flexibility, there is room, there is plenty of room, 
for opinions, okay? I can, I, the way you see it may not be the way I see it, regardless of what he's saying. You see, God, the Bible says that he does not change. And the Bible says that forever his word is settled in heaven. Okay, that word is established. It is settled. So it's, there is no question of, oh, you, you are not just seeing it the way I see it. No, we are going to see what the Lord is saying. We are going to see what the Bible is saying. Because, because it, it, through, if, we are, if we are going through the, the broad gate, then we can see it differently. We can, we can interpret it to suit, to suit our own, circum, our own uh, preferences. You, you, we can interpret the Bible to suit our own preferences, what we prefer. You know, through, through the narrow gate, everything is nuanced. I mean, through the broad gate, rather. Through the broad gate, everything is nuanced. There are different shades and different sizes, okay? They, they, they believe each circumstance can be defined to suit the goal they are trying to achieve. Whatever goal you are trying to achieve, you, you, can, you can just, you know, manipulate the scripture to, to, to suit it. The broad gate allows you to not have a, or, or to not have a hold or absolute on absolute. There is no, there's no, there is no such thing as absolute truth on anything. There is no absolute truth. You can, you can lie your way into achieving something. You can have an alternative definition to what the scripture says as absolute. You can, you can manipulate your way. You can do whatever you like. It does not matter how you get there. So long, so long as you get there, you know, it's broad. I mean, it's wide. It's narrow. I mean, it's wide. It's, 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 it's the broad gate and it's convenient that's another thing it is convenient the broad gate is convenient it's convenient for everybody there is no discipline there is no dying to self there is no self control there is no self denial okay you can if you want it you can have it you don't control your appetite you, you don't control you don't control your your desires your needs you you don't control your urges you can do whatever you like because it, it is broad, it's, it's, it's convenient. Nobody is holding you to account. And if somebody tries to hold your account, you can tell them exactly where to go. You can decide that, that as long as you are not hurting anybody by the choices you are making, then that's fine, even when it doesn't please God. You can say, what's your own? Am I hurting you? My decisions that I'm making, what does it have? What impact is it having in your life? Just leave me alone. Let me continue to, to live the way I want to live. That is a broad gate. And you, if we look around us today, in the world that we are living today, we find that that is how most people are living. And that is why we cannot please God. And especially people, I'm, I'm talking to especially people who go to church, who call themselves Christians. You go, you call, you call yourself a Christian, but you are living an alternative lifestyle. Your lifestyle does not glorify God. Your lifestyle is not submissive to God. You, are, you, are, you feel, you believe that you can enter... If, if this if you can walk this path of life through the broad gates, Jesus said no. But however, when you say something is narrow, because it says enter through the narrow gate, because that is that is the one that leads to life. And if you say something is narrow, if something is narrow, what you are saying is that it is it is slim, it is slender. It, there there is no there is no wiggle room. Okay, it is restrictive. It is restrictive. You are saying there is no wiggle room and no scope. There is no scope for negotiation in the matter. There is no scope for negotiation in the matter. You cannot modify it. You cannot change it. You cannot modify the requirements. It is either you accept it or you don't accept it. It is what it is and it ain't what it ain't. It is strict. It is narrow. Okay? It is strict. There are things that, that you cannot take with you when you're entering through the, the, the narrow gate. And that's, that sounds harsh, doesn't it? It sounds harsh. But what the Lord is saying, that in other words, what he's saying to us is that to enter through the gate of life, there are things that you need to get rid of. To enter through the gates of life, there are things that you need to get rid of because they cannot enter through the gate. There is no room for, for them to enter through the gate with you, okay? If you can imagine you, you want to enter uh, even your, your own door, 
your own door, for example, you maybe you are going into your living room and you are carrying all these kind of baggages and box and box and stuff like that. You know, you have bags here, you have this, that, and the other that it, that it has become too wide for your door. You will not be able to get in. Or, for example, if you want to enter into a car, you will not be able to get in into that car unless you leave some stuff behind. And that is what the Lord is saying to us: it to enter through the gate of life. There are things you need to get rid of that cannot come with you. For example, pride cannot come with you. Arrogance cannot come with you. Cannot come with you. It cannot come. Disobedience, rebellion cannot come with you. Okay? Knowing what to do and not enter into that gate with you. There is no room for lukewarmness. Jesus said that. It's either you are hot or you are cold. If you are lukewarm, I will spit you out. There is no room. There is no room for, for, for lukewarmness. There is no room for compromise, okay? If you are going to enter through the narrow gate, there is no room for compromise. There is no room for lies, no room for deception, no room for manipulation, no room for cheating or double standards. Your yes has to be your yes and your no has to be your no. You have to let go. You have to let go. Of, 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 of some things, of, of, of these things, okay? And let your yes be yes, and let your no be no. There is no room for taking revenge, okay? Because you have to let God be be your your uh, the one who avenges you in his own time and in his own way. You cannot enter through the gates, through the narrow gates, by still holding on to malice. You've got to drop it. Because the gates... Is too narrow and these are just a few examples this is something that we need to do we need to uh, check our own selves on a daily basis okay it, it is not it is not a a, a one-off thing it is it's a lifelong thing that we are going to be doing and checking ourselves for as long as we are walking this path every day that god gives you another opportunity to see the light of day you open your eyes on that day, you know that you are, you, are, you are making your commitment to God again, that today, Lord, I'm going to walk for you. I'm going to enter through that narrow gate. And situations will present themselves to you where you will have the opportunity to choose on a daily basis. On a daily basis. And you have to decide what you are going to do. Okay? Hallelujah. When you say something is narrow, it's it, 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 it's just restrictive. It's restrictive. It's restrictive. Walking the path of life is not always as easy as sometimes as as it, as it is sometimes made out to be. Matter of fact, walking the path of life can be one of the most difficult things you have to do at times. We have been told that because we are followers of Jesus Christ. We must have a certain way, you know, have certain way that we, we behave ourselves, a certain way that, that we are seen, that the, we must be seen in some certain light and uphold the standards of Jesus Christ all the time. And that is very correct. That is exactly what I said last week. And that is exactly what is what is expected of us. Okay. But, but that, as I said, there are costs to these things. Walking the path of life will cost you, will cost you. So, so in order to bring some balance into this, I want you to listen, okay? I just want to share two thoughts with you about, about what walking the path of life can cost you and will cost you for everyone, everyone. Jesus said that whosoever will walk with me, whosoever will follow me must deny themselves. So that, that applies to you, that applies to me. That applies to everybody. Amen. It applies to you. It applies to me. It applies to everybody. I, I find it interesting that Jesus, that the Bible says that then Jesus called the crowd to him. You know, most of the time, if you study the Gospels, especially the ministry of Jesus Christ as he was decide, um, um, teaching his disciples, many times he will, he will call his disciples um, to his side and, and minister to them and teach them. But the crowd, he just does general thing. But I find it interesting that in this particular instance, that Jesus, um, he, he called the crowd to himself 
along with his disciples. This is very important. He did this because he didn't want anybody to get it twisted. Don't think that this is this is um a, a, a this is just a very easy glamorous uh glamorous thing that oh yes we are following Jesus and this applies to all the so-called ministers who think that being a minister of the gospel is is like being a, a, a rock star a movie star a celebrity lifestyle it is not it is not you have to die daily you have to deny yourself on a daily basis you don't go for a popularity contest you have to keep your head down and hear what the spirit of god is saying to you as a minister of the gospel hallelujah You call some people to to to, to minister. They want they you know to to just serve. You call them to serve. Oh, they want to hold the pool, the, the the microphone. They want to be seen. They want to be known. Just because they they they, they think that they can teach them. They want popularity. They want clout. They're chasing clout. They 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 want big followership. You are not ready. You are not ready. You are not called to be to be a celebrity. In heaven, yes, they're celebrating you in heaven. But here, you are called to serve. You are called to serve. If as a consequence of you serving, people get to appreciate what you are doing and celebrate you, that is another matter, okay? But you don't chase, you don't chase the celebrity lifestyle because you will sell your soul. And Jesus said that what does it profit you? What does it profit you? Because when we when we when we quote that scripture, we quote it to to unbelievers that we are trying to evangelize, that we are trying to get them to come to Christ. Okay, but no, that scripture actually speaks to us because you find that Jesus was speaking to, although he was speaking to um, the crowd, but also to his disciples here, his disciples. That what does it profit you to gain the whole world and then you lose your soul, you lose yourself? When, when he's saying that you lose your soul, it means that you lose the essence of who you are. Your soul is the essence of who you are, the seat of your decisions, the seat of your emotions, your memories, who you are. Hallelujah. What does it, what does it profit you that you gain all this clout, all this celebrity lifestyle that you are chasing after? And then you lose who you are. You lose the essence of who you are. You lose your integrity. Your name is plastered all over the social media for the wrong things, for the wrong reasons. Bringing this disrepute to the kingdom of God that you are supposed to be upholding the standard of. Hallelujah. Bringing shame and dishonor to the name of Jesus Christ. And yet you want to call yourself a pastor. Yet you want to call yourself a bishop. You, want, you like all these big titles. But you cannot pay the cost of discipleship. You cannot pay the cost. You cannot deny yourself. You cannot pay the cost of walking the path of life. You are not ready to get to walk in through the narrow gate. To deny yourself. To strip yourself of all of this baggage. All of this rubbish that you are carrying with you. That doesn't profit you and doesn't bless God anyway. You are not willing to drop them. And enter through the gate. You see, we have to come as we are. We have to come as we are. We have to get rid of all of these things that will stand in our way of ascending the throne of God. Hallelujah. Psalm 24 said that who can ascend the hill of the Lord or who can stand in his holy mountain? He who has clean hands and a pure heart. Clean hands and a pure heart. Clean hands and a pure heart. It's non-negotiable. And for you to have clean hands and a pure heart, you have to have self-denial. You have to have the ability to deny yourself and carry your cross every day and follow Jesus. Hallelujah. Carry your cross every day. So walking the path of life is very costly. Very costly. I want to share two thoughts with you and then I'm, I'm done. Okay. The path of life, number one, can be a very lonely one. The path of life, walking the path of life can be can be very lonely. Can be a lonely walk. You feel so alone, even though you are not alone. And this is so because it is an individual walk with God. 
because even though on the one hand we recognize that we we have um we have people that we associate ourselves with we have church we have a church that we go and we have brothers and sisters in christ you know we are part of a, a, a Christian community, we we recognize that we have our, our families, you know, maybe our parents or our our spouse and children or whatever. So, and we have social, you know, our friends in social environments and things like that. So that's where you think that, oh yes, um, how can I be alone? But on the other hand, there will be there will be a time in your life when only you can make a decision regardless of all the network uh, support network that you have around you only you can make a decision you can get counseling the people can advise you uh, and they can you know but oh, at the end of the day it comes down to you and it could be a decision that that you know that has a, 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 a very very uh, a big consequence this is the harsh reality of, of this thing, okay? You, you, only you, only you can make that decision. Only you can can do, can, can decide. Um, it's like, maybe it's about relocating, for example, okay? Maybe the Lord is laying it on your heart to relocate or an opportunity arises and should I relocate? Should I not relocate? Should I do this? Should I not do it? You can take counsels. You can tell your pastor, you can you, you you know you can tell everybody all the support network around you it could be about maybe some people so maybe your child is misbehaving in a way there is a decision it, it, it's different for everybody but for everybody there is always a decision that only you can make and in that moment you feel alone in that moment you feel alone it could be about your career it could be about your business it could be about your family but only you can make that decision. Hallelujah. Only you can make that decision. Sometimes it could be something is happening to you. Like, like a, a life challenge is happening to you. You are going, you are going through a, so, some kind of challenge. And, and it does not matter who you talk to or whatever. Nobody gets it like you, like you are feeling it. Nobody can feel your pains for you. Nobody can cry your tears for you. No, nobody. And that is when you feel like, where is where is everybody? You feel so alone. You feel so, sometimes in cases like that, we, we, we even feel like, God, where are you? Where are you in this circumstance? Where are you in this situation? And you feel alone, but you are the only one who can, who can, who can make a decision, who can make a move. You are the only one who can feel that pain. Nobody can feel it for you. No matter how much they love you, no matter how much they are, they are telling you we are there, we are praying for you. But at the end of the day, you are the only one who is feeling that pain. You are the only one who is agonizing over that situation. Okay? At times like this, you feel lonely. Even though you are surrounded by people of seemingly like-minded. Okay? No one can feel what you feel. No one can feel the, go through the agony for you. But yet, at times like this, with tears running down your face, you choose the pathway of life anyway. You enter through the narrow gate anyway. You deny yourself anyway. And you lay, you lay your choices down for God, for God's choice. Like Jesus said in Mark 11, 28, come upon me, all you who labor and are heavily laden. I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am humble and lowly in heart. And my, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Let me just pause to minister to somebody today. I don't know what decision you are agonizing over. I don't know what it, what it is that you are going through, what situation you are going through today. And you feel alone. You feel like, where is everybody? No matter what people do, it, it just doesn't reach. It doesn't reach the, the, where, the, where the pain is because the, the, it's so deep. That is because only God can fill that vacuum. That is because only God can satisfy that desire. I don't know what it is that you are going through, but I speak, I, I remind you of this scripture, Mark eleven twenty, 20, where Jesus is saying, come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden. You, are, you may be heavily laden by, by 
um, problem with your with your health. You may be heavily laden by problems with your children. I don't know what your particular yoke is, but Jesus is asking you today to come and exchange your yoke for his own yoke. He says because he is gentle and lowly in heart, and his yoke is easy, and his burden is light. So go through that narrow gate today and lay down your pain, lay down your hurt, lay down your fears, lay down your anxieties before Jesus and allow him to give you his rest. He said, and I will give you rest. I believe that is for somebody today. I believe that is for somebody today that he wants to give you rest. You have been, you have been agonizing over this situation for so long you have been wrestling with it battling with it for so long but the lord is saying i will give you rest i will give you rest if you will not insist on on achieving that thing a, a particular way but there are many other ways that god could help you to achieve that particular thing okay if you will just let go if you will just let go the lord will give you rest amen he will give you rest. So you choose that pathway anyway. You enter through the narrow gate anyway, and you choose it because you know, you know that ultimately the Lord will lead you to that to life in that particular situation. Ultimately, the Lord will give you the victory in that particular situation. You know, you know that according to Romans 8, 28, all things are going to work together for your good. At the end of the day, this situation is going to work together for your good. Hallelujah. You choose to carry that cross and follow Jesus because you know that according to Psalms 23 verse 3, he will lead you in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. He will do it for his name's sake. You see, his name is at, is at stake. You bear the name of Jesus. Everybody knows you as a Christian. Okay, he will not allow disgrace to come to his own name he will not allow shame to come to his own name he will lead you in the path of righteousness for his name's sake because of his name because you bear his name hallelujah because you bear his name you could have chosen to please yourself in that matter you could have chosen to compromise your faith because you think no one no one was watching you no one was there so nobody would know Nobody would know what you did. And if nobody knows what you did, then nobody would be disappointed. You could have chosen to cut corners and, and, and do some dubious deals with some shady people that could bring you some cash flow to do, you know, to do the things that you need to do to meet your pressing financial needs. Okay, you could have tried to manipulate the situation, lie, cheated, and deceived people, or just lower your standard altogether to save face with the people and to maintain your status with the people around you. But no, you didn't. No, you didn't. No, we do not. We do not do that. We choose to honor God and his standard. We choose to pick up that particular cross in that particular circumstance and continue to follow Jesus all the way. You are like Apostle Paul. You are like Apostle Paul in, 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 in Philippians chapter 3, verse 7, when he said that whatever was gain for me, I now consider it loss for the sake of Christ. Whatever was gain for me, I now consider it loss for the sake of Christ. Nothing is worth it. Nothing is worth my work with God. Nothing is worth is worth me forfeiting my fellowship with God. Nothing is worth me forfeiting my fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Nothing is worth me forfeiting hearing the voice of God, especially when I need it. Hallelujah. So you, you, you're choosing not to have your own way. You are choosing not to do, not to do things in your own way. Having your own way is, is not as important to you compared to what you have in Christ Jesus. Because Jesus made it very clear. He said that the only way we can follow him is when we deny ourselves. And self-denial, as I said, is not always very easy. It will cost you. Self-denial is not, it's not all, always just about, about curbing our urges or our appetites or whatever. Self-denial is about denying ourselves the things that we could have had legitimately. Okay? The things that make sense to us in the moment. But then we deny ourselves 
We count it loss just to gain Christ for the sake of Christ. We're talking about the cost of walking the path of life. Okay, so that is one. The second, the second thing that walking the path of life will cost you sometimes is that sometimes it is not as obvious as we think it will be or uh, as we would like it to be. You know, make, making that choice, making that, that decision is not as obvious to us sometimes. Sometimes it is very clear, very obvious, but sometimes it is not. You don't know what to do in the moment. There are times that you struggle with knowing the right thing to do in the moment or in a particular situation. Okay, these are times when you find yourself with multiple options and they all seem very logical. <laughs> they all seem very practical and they all seem very right in that particular situation, okay? And it will appear that there are no particular or specific scripture that could address that particular or specific issue. Have you ever found yourself in a situation where there are so many options to the solution, but you can't find specific scripture that will address it specifically? Okay, there are scriptures that addresses everything only when we allow the Holy Spirit to interpret that scripture to us. Okay, but sometimes it is not always obvious. It is not always obvious. There is no scripture that tells you that this is the particular person you should marry. That this person, that is, that is the name of the person and this is the particular person that you should marry. There is no scripture that will tell you that in the Bible. Okay, but following Jesus, leaning on him and leaning on the Holy Spirit will guide you and will direct you. And that is just one example. There are very many examples like that as well, where you are, you are faced with multiple options. There are things that you could do, but you are looking for a particular scripture that will guide you, that will tell you that this is what you should do. And, and, and you, you agonize over that situation. You know, you agonize over that decision. Should I do it? Should I not do it? Should I do it? Should I not do it? And at times like this, as a follower of Christ, you find yourself really waiting on God. Really, you know, if you're waiting on God. You're fasting. You're praying. You say, God, show me. God, direct me. God, I want you to direct me. I want to do the right thing. You are, you are waiting on God. You are fasting every day. You, are, you, are, you, you listen for his voice every day. And you think, God... I don't want to do anything that will displease you. I don't want to do anything that will dishonor you. But, but show me what to do. But you see, at times like this, you need to know that that is exactly where God wants you to be. In the place of waiting on him. In the place of leaning on him. In the place of allowing him to guide you and direct you. And not just going ahead, full steam ahead and doing your own thing. And, and then wait and then bringing it to God for God to bless you, to bless that thing, or going to make a mess of your life, or going to make a mess of that situation without waiting to hear God. Just because God did not speak the first day that you started fasting, or just because the, God did not say um, anything, you didn't hear anything the first week, the first month, the first year even, okay? The first year even does not mean that God is not moving, does not mean that God is not listening, Okay, but he is teaching you. He is teaching us to lean on him. Okay, but he's teaching he's teaching us to to want to to hear from him. That is exactly where he wants us to be in a place of total reliance. Total reliance. God is teaching you total reliance on him. The Bible tells us in Proverbs chapter three, verses five, uh, five and six. You know, this is another very popular scripture. Proverbs um, chapter three. Verses 5 and 6, it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. See, your own understanding is very limited. As a human being, your, our understanding is very limited. What do we understand? What do we know? God sees the end right from the beginning. The Bible says that he is the beginning, he's the end, he's the Alpha and Omega. You see, this year we are just in, uh, about to round up the month of May, the fifth month of the year. God has already seen 
the last day in December because he made it, okay? So he knows everything that will happen. He knows all things. He understands all things. And that is why he's telling us to not lean on our own understanding, but in all our ways, in all our ways, everything that we are doing, everything that we want to do, we must acknowledge him. You must acknowledge God in every decision that you want to make. And then that is when he will direct your path. Okay, when 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 you are stiff necked and you are rebellious, he will not come and direct your path. Then he will just leave you to go and do your own thing, make a mess of it, and then come back to him. And then he will then he will begin to 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 minister to you. Okay, so he says, lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge God, and He will direct your path. And He is faithful to do so. God is faithful to those. That is exactly what he wants to do. That he desires to guide you. He desires to guide you. He desires to direct your path. He desires to lead you. Hallelujah. If you are, if you are struggling with a particular uh, a decision, a particular choice, I am encouraging you today. Do not lean on your own understanding. Acknowledge God in that circumstance because he desires, he desires to lead you in the, in the right path. You know, the way there is a way, there's a certain way that you should do that thing. There is a certain way that you should go. That, that's why he tells us in Psalm 32 verse 8. Psalm 32 verse 8, it says, it says that I will instruct you and teach you in the way that you should go. I will guide you with my own eye. I will instruct you and teach you in the way that you should go. You know, as, 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 as disciples of Jesus Christ, if we just settle on this and say, Lord, I want you to instruct me and guide me in the way that I should go, not in the way that I think that I should go, not in the way that other people are going, because other people, you cannot always compare other people's journey with your own journey there is a certain way that you should go about that task there is a certain way that you should raise your children raise that particular child that is different to every other children that you have there is a certain way that you should go about every situation but the lord is saying that i will instruct you are you willing to be instructed by God? Are you willing to be guided by him? He says, I will guide you with my own eye. His eye will be upon you. Hallelujah. This is because God doesn't want you to rely on your own wisdom or your own righteousness, but he wants you to depend on him. For He wants him to depend on him for wisdom for every step you take in your Christian journey. Depend him for wisdom for every step you take on your Christian journey, okay? Do not rely on your own wisdom, okay? When it is difficult, that this is, it is costly because I don't know about you, but if you have found yourself agonizing over something and you are afraid to make the wrong choice, you are afraid to make the wrong decision because you don't, you don't know uh, where this might lead. So God knows what we don't know. And he sees ahead of us. He sees what we do not see. So surrender everything to him. That is the cost. Surrender everything to him. Who knows everything. Who sees everything. Who is able to guide you. Who is able to instruct you. Okay. So the cost of discipleship is that you will surrender everything. You will just let go of everything. And allow him to lead you. And he will lead you in the path of righteousness. For his name's sake. His name is at stake. And when you find yourself desperately waiting for God to guide you in a particular situation, this also brings you closer to God. It brings you closer to God because your time of communion with God, in your time of studying your Bible, in your time of fasting and waiting, all that will do is draw you closer to God again. We will strengthen your work with him. It will strengthen your relationship with him. Although it's a cost, but also it is a benefit. Although it is a cost, but the benefit of it is that it will strengthen your work with God. It will strengthen your relationship with God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So in this season, allow God to guide you. When you're in that, in that season of waiting, in that season of not knowing, in that season of trusting God, let him strengthen your work and your faith in him. Your faith will also be strengthened. Your faith will also be strengthened because you know that you are walking by faith. And that is why the Bible tells us in Romans um, chapter 1, verse 17, that the just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. 
the just, the just shall live by faith. Okay, you have to live by faith. You don't have to know everything, understand everything. And that's here is another thing. Don't feel the need to explain everything to everybody. Just, just walk every day by faith. I know it is painful. I know it is, it is uh, uncomfortable. I know sometimes it is inconvenient but it is what is expected of us. It is what is required of us. So we see that there is a cost to this lifestyle. It is not as easy and as glamorous as we, as we think that it is. There is a cost to it. And, and there is a cost to, to being a disciple of Jesus Christ. But in as much as there is a cost to it, it's costly. Also, I want to leave you with the benefits of it as well. So it's not all about cost, 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 cost. It's just to bring a balance to it. Because last week I talked about the fact that we need to walk this lifestyle. We need to live this lifestyle. And today I'm saying that we have to enter through the narrow gate. Okay? And some of the benefits is that you know that you are never alone. Because he said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. You know that you are never alone when you are walking with Christ. He is always present with you. He is very present with you. Always by your side. He will never leave you. You know that he is able to make all things work in your favor. All things can work in your favor. He will make all things to work in your favor. So long as you are, you are not in a um, power struggle with God, that he's saying, bring it, you, you know, you are you are." Whatever it is he's trying to take from you, you are, you, are, you are trying to pull it back, but you trust him, you surrender all to him, you know that he will make it to work in your favor. At the end of the day, the Bible says that those who look to God, they are radiant, and their faces are never covered with shame. The Lord will not allow your face to be covered with shame. No matter what happens, at the end of the day, you will, you will arise, you will come out of it triumphant, glowing, okay? You will be radiant. That is what the Bible says. You will be radiant. Your face will never be covered with shame. You know that according to Isaiah chapter 26 verse 3, he will keep you in perfect peace. He says that it will, he will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is steadfast on him. For as long as your mind is steadfast on God, for as long as you don't have a divided mind, that you're, uh, today you are thinking about um, um, being with God tomorrow, your mind is on that thing that you want to achieve. The Lord says that so long as your mind is fixed on him, he will keep you in perfect peace, no matter how fierce the storm is. No matter how fierce the storm is, he will keep you in perfect peace. Peace that passes all understanding. Peace that is not that is not explic that is not explicable. Inexplicable peace, inexplicable wonders that anybody cannot explain. The Lord will keep you in perfect peace. He is the Prince of Peace. Hallelujah. He says, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives. He, he will keep you in, your mind will be saved. Your mind will not be troubled. No matter what is going on around you, no matter the situation that you are facing, the Lord will make sure that your heart is, is stout and your mind is at peace. Hallelujah. Perfect peace. You know that he will fiercely defend you as well uh, and, and give you the victory in every and all circumstance. Psalm 89 verse 18 tells us that for the Lord God is our refuge. The Holy One of Israel is our King. For the Lord is our refuge. The Holy One of Israel is our king he is your refuge your hiding place hallelujah your hiding place he's your shield he's your shield that, that protects you amen he's your he's your strong tower the name of the lord is a strong tower the righteous run into it and they are safe so he, he you, i can go on and on and on there are so many benefits so many benefits that we that we enjoy that we enjoy by walking this lifestyle by walking through the narrow gate, you know that he is your advocate. Jesus is your advocate. His blood is pleading your cause before the Father, even right now. Okay, his blood is speaking on your behalf. The blood of Jesus is speaking on your behalf before the Father. That is why the Bible tells us in Romans chapter 8, verse 34, says that who then is the one who will condemn us? No one. Christ Jesus who died, more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. When I remember that scripture, when I remember that my Lord Jesus Christ 
after everything that he did for me on the cross of Calvary, he, he rose at, on the third day and now he's seated at the right hand of, of God the Father and he's interceding for me. He is pleading my cause. It, 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 keeps me, it gives me this peace, this confidence. He says, who will lay a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. It is God who has justified you. It is God who has, who has acquitted you. And it is his blood that is pleading your cause. Anybody who wants to accuse you, who wants to lay an allegation against you, they will have to contend with the blood of Jesus Christ to get to the Father. They will have to contend with the blood of Jesus Christ. That is why you cannot be afraid. That is why you cannot be afraid. No matter what anybody is saying to you, no matter what the circumstances are saying to you, you cannot be afraid. You know that at the end you win. At the end you win. You will not compromise your standard. You will not compromise the, your faith. You will not compromise the standard of the kingdom of God. You will carry that cross. Carrying the cross um, typifies, it signifies that you are, you are, you are carrying, you are, it, it, it signifies shame. Sometimes it signifies, not sometimes, all the time. Yes. Carrying a cross is, 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 is dying to something. It signifies death because on the cross is where Jesus died. Sometimes we go through a situation that is shameful, that, 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 that is embarrassing, but we carry that cross anyway. We carry it because we are not going to compromise. Even when there are there may be ways for us to compromise and not have to carry that cross and not have to face that 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 embarrassing situation. But you see, we know, <laughs> hallelujah, the blood of Jesus is pleading our cause. He's pleading our cause and he is telling you today. He is telling you today that he is for you, he is not against you. He is telling you today that he is for you. He is not against you. So stay strong. Stay focused. Stay committed. Don't quit. Regardless of what it looks like right now. Don't quit. Don't go through the broad gate. Don't follow those who are going uh, through the broad gate. The wide gate. That allows everything to go on. They go to church. They call themselves Christians, but they are still doing things that don't please God. And they don't, they don't even have any shame about it. They are not even shameful about it anymore. The Bible says in the book of Romans that their, their, heart, their heart has been seared. You know, it's calloused, incapable of being ashamed anymore. I'm encouraging you today, child of God. Go through that narrow gate. No matter how painful it is stay on course stay on course because what does it profit a man to gain everything that he wants to gain but then loses his soul loses the essence of who he is loses his connection with god loses his integrity what does it profit that person there is no profit in it because everything in this world is fleeting is passing it's like vapor. It is only our work with God that is going to stand the test of time. When we face the Father, and everybody will, at different times, we all will. And when our time comes, what we hope we will hear is, well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into the rest of your Father. There is nothing in this world that compares to that. Nothing in this world that compares to that. There is no crowd. There is no uh, uh, followership. There is nothing. There is no money. There is no status that can, that can compare to that. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you for your word today. We receive your word. We receive your And I just pray. I know, Father God, when I was preparing this, you're telling me that messages like this are not popular anymore. You know, it, 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 they're not popular anymore. It's all about what people can get from the church, what people can get from the kingdom of God, not about how they can serve the cause of the kingdom. But Father, we ask today in the name of Jesus that you take us back. Take us back, oh God to the place where we first met you, 
to the place, oh God, where we first gave our heart to you. And help us to stay there, to stay committed, to stay committed, to stay focused, to, to, to have a desire to please you always and every time. In the name of Jesus Christ, to prioritize you, to, to, to choose the narrow gate, no matter how inconvenient, no matter how uncomfortable, no matter how unpopular it is. Father, we ask in the name of Jesus that you help us to choose that narrow gate, to walk the path of life, and to live this abundant life here on earth. And then when we get to eternity, we can continue it with you. Father, we love you. We appreciate you today. Lord, I pray that the that there will be people who will watch this video back on replay at different times after today. Lord, I ask that you will minister to them, that you will help them to hear your voice in this message and that they will be able to change. I give you praise, Lord. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I trust that you have been blessed. I pray that the Lord will keep you focused. These days that um, Christianity is being redefined. I pray in the name of Jesus that this message will open your eyes once again and take you back to the place where you first met the Lord. And that your heart will be tender towards him that you will not resist him or you will allow him to make you into what he wants you to be. Amen. God bless you richly. Thank you for your fellowship and I look forward to seeing you again next Sunday. Shalom. Shalom.